So I wanted to make this smallest GPS tracker project that runs on a battery. And it's not like I haven't tried making this project. I tried making this using the TTQ T-Call board previously and I also got success in making that project. But that project was not that much compact. I want to make it way more smaller than that. So I started my research on the perfect IoT board uh, that can you know fulfill my purpose of the smallest GPS tracker. And I landed up on this A9G module which is half of the size of the TTQ T-Call board and still have a lot of features in it. Like, it perfect GPS tracker banane ke liye kya samagri chahiye? Saleh, seedhi saral bhasha baat karne ko nahi aati. So what are the major components required to make a GPS tracker? Well, one of them is the GPS model of course to get the location. Second is the GSM GPRS model to send that data without having any foundation of a Wi-Fi router. And third is the microcontroller that control all the tasks. Okay. So out of these three major components, three major modules, two of them are built in inside this A9G module. Yes, this A9G has built in GSM and GPS module and along with that, it also have a lot of features in it. So what we're gonna do is in this video, I'll let you know everything about this board, like what are its specifications, configurations, how to send and receive SMS, make and receive calls, how to get the GPS location, how to use the low power mode that will consume a way less battery. Yes, it has some power saving modes as well. And a lot of things I'll let you know in this video. So this is kind of a getting started with you this with this A9G module. And after we successfully, uh, you know, uh, learn about this board, we'll try to make a GPS tracker. And let's see, hum ek achha, tikau, useful GPS tracker just stick around with this video and if you are new to this channel you need to subscribe this channel if you want to learn about this greatest and latest iot boards in the market as i come up with this kind of videos every week that being said let's start our video about a9g module do you know what most electronic companies have something in common well, it's the tool that they use for making their products and the most commonly used tool that almost all the big electronic companies uses is the LTM PCB designer software. Using LTM, you can definitely level up your PCB designing skills and make something really professional out of it. And now along with the integration of Octopart, searching for any electronic components globally becomes really very easy. Octopart is kind of Google for just electronic components where you can search for any electronic parts and get their information all on one single web page. So do check out this amazing search engine made just for electronic components. I'll leave the link for this down in the description. Do check it out. So starting with the configurations of the chip on which this board is based then, this board is based on RDA8955 chip which has built in quad band GSM GPRS of class 10 which is kind of similar to the SIM 800 module and also most of the AT commands are kind of similar that we already used in the SIM 800 module. Also let me make you clear this board also supports the 2G SIM cards or the network provider who have 2G bands so make sure uh, you use that SIM cards only. So along with GSM GPRS that chip also has integrated GPS in it through which we can easily get the look. Now if I talk about the specifications of the board then, we get onboard microphone using which we can make some spy projects. I'll definitely test this microphone and we'll look at the quality and we'll see if we are able to make some spy projects out of this or not. Then we also have a dedicated slot for speaker in case we want to connect one. We also get a dedicated pin to attach the battery, a micro USB on board through which we can power up the board and also charge the battery but we can't access the chip using the USB connector. We still need to make external connection with the USB to TTL converter to pass on the AT commands. Then we get dedicated connectors for connecting both GSM and GPS antenna. We do also have two push buttons on the board. One is the reset button and other is the power button. We have two LEDs on the board out of which one is for GPS indication and other is for GSM GPRS indication. On the back, we get a slot for connecting micro SD card as well as micro SIM card. This board also comes with 29 GPIO pins. And we get all of this in a very compact size of just 40 by 25 mm. Amazing, right? So yeah, those were the specification of the board. And well, you can get this board from our website at the cheapest price on internet. Yes, we are selling this through our website whose link is down in the description. Click that link, buy it and you'll get that board delivered at your doorstep with the same day shipping. Okay, now let's just move ahead and let's see how to use this board. 
So for using this board, you'll require one USB to TTL converter. And here I'm using my own made universal TTL programmer. And you can get this programmer as well from our website whose link is down in the description. And I'll make the connection between our USB to TTL converter and the A9G model according to this connection diagram. Okay, so after making the connections, open up Arduino IDE and here I'll select the right COM port, which is this and I'll open the serial monitor and set the baud rate to 115200. After doing that, let us press the reset button on the board. Okay, it says in it, so it initialized. Okay, the board is initialized and it will throw some of the commands that it already have in its built-in firmware. We need to wait until we get the ready from the uh, no board side. Okay, as you can see, we got the ready from the board side. So now we are ready to use this board. Let's try out some basic commands to see if we are uh, able to communicate with this board or not. So I'll just type AT first of all. So it is written as OK. So it's perfectly fine. So now I'll type AT plus CGMM, which will return the chipset. So this is based on A9 or A9G chipsets. Our particular board is based on A9G chipset only. After that, I'll type ATI that will give us the information regarding the manufacturer of this chip, which is AI Thinker. And also it gave us the firmware version. Okay. After that, we'll type other command as AT plus uh, C pin yeah, question mark and it returns ready that means our sim card is properly inserted onto this and to check the network operator then we need to type the command as at plus cops is equal to question mark and then it will you know return the network operator that uh, this sim card is using so basically all the commands are exactly the same as we are using the same 800 module but there are a lot more commands in this uh, uh, as compared to same attended because it has GPS built in, it has battery charging circuit built in, and there are a lot of things built in. As you can see, it returned as an uh, operator as Vodafone. It also returned operator as Cell One and Airtel. Maybe it supports the networks from those companies as well. But uh, for your information, I'm using the Vodafone idea that VI SIM card in this particular model that supports the 2G band. Okay, so that was all about this SIM card. Okay, so now let's try out the calling feature and let's test the built-in microphone on this board. So for calling you to type the command as ATD plus 91. Well, 91 is the country code of India as I live in India. And after that, I type in well number and in the end, I put a semicolon here and let's just press the enter button. Let's see if it makes the call or not. The command is successfully sent and okay. On my smartphone, I received the call from this particular SIM card. And as of now, I'll cut it. Okay, so I declined the call here, but what I'll do, I'll uh, call it again and let us put this model in some other room and phone in some other room and let's test the built-in microphone quality and let's see, is it useful for spying? Okay, are we able to listen to the voice of the people nearby? Let us test out the mic. So right now we'll be testing the microphone attached onto this A9G module and let us see, is it crystal clear or not? So now you'll be listening to the voice coming from the microphone. So hello everyone, how are you doing? So this is Sachin calling from ATC module and this is the business of the microphone and are you able to listen to my voice clearly or not? Yeah, but now, yeah, yeah, your microphone. Are you inspiring you to listen to or is it really very useful or not? How is the voice like doing the comment? So yeah, that was the voice from the E9G module. I think it should be pretty much good enough. And now let's move on with the video. Okay, so the mic quality was really awesome. It's kind of the same quality that we get in the modern day smartphone, you can say, okay? So this can be definitely used uh, in spying the conversation of the people. But hey, do that ethically, like use this uh, as an ethical tool. Don't misuse this kind of spying tools. Don't misuse that. That's the disclaimer I want to give. Use it ethically, okay? Okay, so similarly, we can receive the calls on the module and we can pick up the call by a simple command. Let me just show you that command as well. So I'll just call from my smartphone to this module and let's just wait for the response. As you can see, it says ring, ring, ring. That means someone is calling on to this particular module. So I'll just type the command ATA and it will pick up the call. Okay, so now the call is initiated. We can now have a conversation, okay? And you can hang up the call by typing the command as is AT plus C H U P chup. And ye chup ho gaya. <laughs> so that's a simple command for, you know, receiving the, uh, you know, attending the voice call and also declining the voice call. Okay. So that was it about the call. Now let's move on to the SMS part and let's see how to send and receive the SMS. So first of all, uh, for, you know, 
receiving and sending the sms we need to do a couple of one time uh, configuration which is you need to type the command as at plus cmgf is equal to one to receive our sms in a text format after that we need to type one more command which is at plus csmp and we need to give the numbers as one seven comma one six seven comma zero comma zero and press enter as i said this is all a one time configuration now you don't need to do that again and again okay so let's first try to receive the sms from the some other number okay so i'll send an sms from my smartphone to this i'll type it as hello small gps tracker i'll send this message from my smartphone and let's just see Aja, 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 uh, okay so we got the message we got the mobile number we got the date and time and we got the uh, the data the payload you can say hello small gps tracker so this is how you can easily receive the message now to send the message there is one command called as at plus cmgs if i'm not wrong yeah at plus cmgs is equal to into double inverted comma you to type the mobile number on which you need to send the sms i'll type my mobile number here close the double inverted comma press enter and it is waiting for the sms so we can type the command here as hello sachin sony that's it yeah okay so now we need to press either the escape button or the control z button but both the buttons are not able to you know we are unable to press the escape button or even the control z, z button inside the terminal window of arduino ide and that is kind of a mandatory command to let the message sent okay so we are not able to do that here so you need to try out some other terminal uh you know tools to send this sms from uh, using this module okay so let me just show you that particular thing so as you can see come on no response so we are unable to send any sms so what i'll do i'll open the terminal window of my mac system only and we are inside the terminal window okay so here i'll repeat the same command at plus cmgs is equal to double inverted comma plus nine one close the double inverted comma waiting for sms i'll type hello such in sony okay i'll just press enter and now i will press escape button okay as you can see it is written as okay in the terminal window that means it is successfully sent and here on my smartphone i should receive the sms let me just turn on the screen recording as well five minutes later okay let's just wait one let's try it out one more time one hour later yaar ye message kyun nahi aa raha one week later bhai kya dikkat ho gayi one eternity later Yeah, it's not working. I'm stopping it. So that was a problem happening only in the terminal windows only. So here I have written a code for sending the message, and here as you can see, I'm, I have used my same mobile number. Here I use the message as hello from A9G, and here I have used at character twenty six. Now this character twenty six. A uh, twenty six basically is an ASCII value of control plus Z. Okay, so after the message, we need to. press control plus z to send that message we were not at all able to do that in the terminal window but here in the code we can do then i'll let you know the example right now i uploaded this code i will just connect the rx tx with my esp32 board so here i'm using the esp32 board only फटाफट मैं कनेक्शन कर देता हूँ ओके सो आई मेड द कनेक्शन सक्सेसफुली आई ओपन द सीरियल मॉनिटर एंड एज यू कैन सी सी जी एम सी एम जी एफ वन सी एम जी एस मोबाइल नंबर एंड हेलो फ्रॉम ए नाइन जी एंड Okay, so it will send the SMS after every ten second, and let's just see if I get the SMS or not. Wait, what is it? Let me just check it out. I should receive the mobile uh, SMS. So it's all okay, 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 okay. So I received the SMS. As you can see, here is the SMS. So I'll be receiving this kind of SMS after every ten seconds. So hello from E nine G is the message. Hopefully, it is visible onto the screen. Okay, okay. So I, as you can see, I got the second message. So I am getting this message continuously, and this is coming from the A nine G module. My God, मुझे तो लगा ये काम ही नहीं करेगा. But yeah, it worked successfully. So we tested the phone call, we tested the SMS, and now we are left with testing the GPS and the GPRS, like the HTTP request. Okay, so let's just test the GPS module, and I'll let you know how we are getting the uh, lot, uh, latitude, longitude, and everything. Let me show you that. Okay, so now I am sitting near to the window side because GPS doesn't work indoors, so we need to move to outdoors or maybe near to a window to get the connection of the satellites. Okay, so now let's see how to access the GPS coordinates. Okay, so for that, first of all, we need to initialize the GPS built-in. For that, the command is at plus GPS is equal to one. With this, we have enabled the GPS, and on the board, the second LED also started blinking, which is dedicated 
completely uh, used for GPS only. Okay, so that LED turned on, which indicates that we are, uh, you know, the GPS is activated basically. Okay, now to get the location, the command is AT plus location is equal to two and it is not uh, available gps not fixed now that is the error that we are uh, you know uh, able to see on the serial monitors just because it will take some time to get connected with the satellites and then we'll be able to get the latitude and longitude data it may take a minute or two to get this data so you just need to try out this uh, command after every interval and maybe after one or two minutes you'll get the data so let's just wait for it Okay, so it took a bit of time, but right now we are getting the locations. So whenever we enter this command, as you can see, here is the latitude and longitude data that we are getting. If I copy this and if I paste this inside my Google Maps, let's just see how accurate the data we are getting. So let us zoom it in a bit. Okay, so it's quite accurate. As you can see, here is the Techie SMS Studio where I am sitting right now, and here is the estimated location. Or the location that we are getting from the GPS model so it's quite close to that and we'll be getting more accurate data when we move outside okay so when we it is clear in the sky so right now I'm still in my studio near to a window so we are getting this estimated data but if we move out if we use it as a real tracking device uh, in outdoors it will be you know working as accurate as it can okay so, and one more thing I want to tell you is we can even turn off the GPS by typing the command AT plus GPS is equal to zero and with this we can switch off the GPS and we can use just the GSM model we can save up save a power okay if it is if it is running on battery it is much important to save the power and using this kind of commands we can you know shut down the GPS and it will uh, work on GSM GPS only okay so Still, but if you want to run GPS all the time, we do have one low power GPS mode and to activate that, we just need to type the command AT plus GPS LP, which stands for low power. And there are a couple of modes in this low power and the one which we are going to use is, let me just share that data with you. So we are going to use uh, the low power mode too. Okay. So this, uh, the GPS is turned on and we can still get the location. As you can see, we are getting the coordinates here, but it is running at low power. So when I tested the power, okay, so I have tested the power with the low power and the normal GPS and the, there were the significant difference in the current consumption. So I have written the data here. Let me just share the data with you guys. So uh, when we have used the regular GPS, the current consumption was around 60 milliamperes. And when we use the GPS low power, the current consumption was half. It was just 30 milliampere and still we were getting the data uh, like the location data here on our serial monitor. Okay, so I'll definitely recommend to use low power version for your battery power projects. I will use tracker in low power for sure. And not only in GPS, but we also have low power version in the GSM GPRS. Uh, module as well and to activate that low power you need to type one command where it is let me just sh uh, sh okay here it is so that command is at plus s l double e p sleep is equal to one so there are also two different modes like sleep modes if i check out uh, the sleep mode now it must be zero yeah so it is not at all inside the power saving mode or sleep mode but we can make it go inside the sleep mode by typing sleep is equal to one or two okay so there are two different sleep modes out of them we'll be using the one but to use that you first need to connect the gpf 25 gpf 25 pin of these a9g model with the ground model and after that you need to enter this command okay let me just show you what what happens when it go inside sleep mode and how much power we are saying let me show you okay so I successfully connected gpio 25 to the ground and i'll enter the sleep command and yeah it is now inside the sleep mode one if we can check let me just check it with this question mark icon okay so as you can see the sleep mode is one but still we are able to do everything like at is working at plus location must also be working let us check it out Okay, we are getting the location as well. Nothing has changed. And at this moment, even the power consumption will be the same, like the 30 milliamperes. There is there will no change in the power consumption. But as you remove this GPIO 25 to ground connection, now let's just see what happens. If I type 80 here, it is like like you can see it is not at all responding. I, I'm not able to get the response of any single command. So now it is inside the sleep mode and we can't access the 80 command. We can still, you know, make a call on this module make a uh, receive an SMS on this model, everything it will be work, but it won't be accepting any command. And at this moment, how much current it is uh, you know, consuming, I have noted down all the current ratings here. So let me just share the detail. So in the sleep mode without GPS, it is consuming 17 milliampers of current without GPS. 
and with gps uh with gps and with sleep mode one it is consuming 27 milli amperes with the gps low power so gps low power and sleep mode it will consume 27 milli amperes of power which is not that great but yeah we are able to make the current consumption as low as possible and we need to do that because that's an utmost and a very important task to reduce the current consumption okay so that was the uh, power saving feature that this module offers which is great and we'll be using this kind of feature while we are actually making the gps tracker project but as of now let's just check out the other commands as well so now let's just check it out the commands to request the http api links okay and for that first of all uh, let's just you know make this module come out of the sleep mode and for that you need to again connect the gpio 25 with the ground and it will come out from the sleep mode and if i press 80 here as you can see now it is responding okay so now let's uh, check out the http company http link request how it works like how the gprs works let me just show you okay so for that first of all the command is 80 plus cga double t is equal to one so this is some configuration that you need to do okay after that you type 80 plus cg d c o n t is equal to one comma into double inverted comma ip then into double inverted comma you need to type the apn name of your network provider in my case the apn name is www press enter and it got accepted as well after that you need to type the command at plus c g a c t is equal to one comma one i just press enter once again oh it is throwing an error okay a it's cg not cf okay it is accepted successfully and now we can do an http get request by typing at plus http get into double inverted commas here into type the website name you which you want to request i'll just type www.google.com for testing purpose because i am not at all requesting any api link as of now let's just press enter and let's just wait for the response okay as you can see it got successfully respond response me kya hai, doesn't matter but api link was successfully requested using the get request method and using this you can request any uh, like blink api links adafruit api links any api links you can request and make your iot projects even we can request the latitude and longitude data to the blink cloud server that we have done in the 4g model as well but yeah this is how the http request will work and also let me share you one more great feature of it this model is it has a built-in battery connector as well as battery charging circuit as well as battery monitoring circuit as well like we can monitor what is the battery percentage at right now at this moment okay and for that the command is very simple at plus cbc question mark as you can see, I'm getting the data as 1, 92. While 1 detects that it is in charging condition and 92 detects the percentage of the battery. Okay. So if I remove the VCC, the charging will stop. Uh, let's just now check the same command AT plus CBC. Okay. Now I removed the VCC connection and made that module run on a battery. Okay. And now let's just see what we are getting in the AT plus CBC command. As you can see, we are getting 0, 87. So 87 is the actual current condition of the battery, the battery percentage. And if I put in the charging mode, it will show the charging status as well. Let us see. Okay, as you can see, it says charging and 87%. And if I remove this charger or remove the USB, uh, the charging VCC connection, it says no charger is inserted. Okay, so it's a battery charging circuit and we can also get the status percentage of the battery. So IoT project is very awesome. Hai. Like we can ask for ask for the battery percentage to this model and through which will be come to know that okay so battery is about to die and we need to charge it as soon as possible yeah bahut sare features is model mein, isn't it how is this model yaar abhi ke abhi like karke comment karke abhi ke abhi batao aage jaane se pehle pehle bata do yaar kaisa laga yaar okay so we have seen all the features of this board and we also learned how to use this board and ye use karne ke baad i found out that this is the perfect board which I need to make a GPS tracker project that runs on a battery. So I'm really excited to make one. So maybe in some upcoming video, I'll use a microcontroller board with this particular A9G module and I'll make a compact GPS tracker. Well, do suggest me, yaar, main sa microcontroller board use karu? Should I use ESP32 or should I go for some Atmel or should I use SAMD21, which 
controller board should I use for making my own GPS tracker? Do let me know your suggestion down in the comments. I'm really excited to make a GPS tracker of my own. And if you're excited too, well, do click the subscribe button as the second part of the video will really come soon. And just follow me on Instagram to stay updated with the progress of this GPS tracker. Or good suggestion, ho to, yeah, do let me know in the comments. Yeah. क्या करके हम बेस्ट में बेस्ट जीपीएस ट्रैकर बना सकते हैं आई डेफिनेटली टेक योर सजेशंस इन माय वीडियो एंड विल इंप्रूव माय जीपीएस ट्रैकर सो या दैट वाज इट अबाउट द ए नाइन जी मॉड्यूल ए नाइन जी के वीडियो के बारे में आई होप यू गॉट टू लर्न समथिंग न्यू अबाउट दिस अमेजिंग आई बोर्ड जो कि बहुत ऑसम है एंड हाँ ये आपको चीपेस्ट प्राइज में मिलेगा लाइक दी चीपेस्ट प्राइज ऑन इंटरनेट फ्रॉम ओनली टेकी एस एम एस Just click the link mentioned in the description and go get one for yourself. And yeah, that being said, I am just ending this video here. And now, just wait for my next video. Until then, explore, learn, share with me. Take your SMS. Yeah, overacting, man. Karayar.